Welcome back. Today we're going to cover section 7.7, .7, approximate integrations. Now, sometimes we're going to integrate things and we just can't even find a pattern for these things. So, but we want to at least get a, an approximation to what this may, uh, the value of this could be. So, we would say if I have an integration from A to B of some function f of x dx. We'll look at this one, 0 to 1 of e dx squared dx. I don't know how to integrate that. I can't do a nice u substitution. Maybe I can find something in the book. Maybe I can't. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking. And I look at some ideas. I'm going to say, well, we know that the integration of a to b of f of x of dx is approximately equal to the summation of i equals 1 through n of some f of x of i star, so there's different x's times the delta x, because we're going to sum these all up. And the delta x is equal to b minus a all over n. So we're going to say where x sub i asterisk is to any point in the i sub interval. So we have all these intervals, because we're going to go looking at all these terms. And x, this here is some value that's in this interval, because we're going to, again, we're summing up all those intervals. Remember those delta x's. Remember all the rectangles that we were looking at in in, in uh, Calc 1 when we were doing the summations. So I'm going to pick an x of i minus 1 to be the left-hand point. Then x sub i asterisk is equal to x of i minus 1. So then through substitution, we're going to say the left end of this is equal to all of this. This is if x sub i asterisk instead of x sub i sub minus 1. If x sub i asterisk is the right hand point of the x sub i asterisk, then it's equal to x sub i. And I can do the same thing and I get the right hand side of this. And I could say that I have a left hand side and a right hand side, the right end point, the left end point. So then I could look at the midpoints of these things and I could sum them all up. And I could say that. The integration of a to b of f of x dx is approximately equal to, and we're going to use this capital M with an n, where n is how many intervals we're going to break it up into, times the delta x, which is b minus a times over n, times all of those intervals. And it's going to tell you that x sub i is equal to one half of x sub i minus one plus x sub i. It's, in other words, it's the midpoint. So we're going to find all these midpoints. All right. So this sounds all crazy, but it'll make more sense when we start working on it. So here we go. I have I want to integrate from zero to two of x over one plus x squared dx, and I only want to have an n that's equal to ten. So I want ten intervals. So I'm going to say delta x. Let me get my pen ready. We had a delta x is equal to b minus a all over n, which in our case is 2 minus 0 over 10, or 1 fifth, which is also 0.2. And so we want to know m, the midpoint with 10 intervals, is equal to 1 fifth, because that's my delta x. Well, actually, or we put the formula, delta x times f of, I just want to see the f of bar x sub 1 right, that's what the formula tells us to do if we're going to 10, we're going to go from 1 through 10 delta x is b minus n b minus a divided by n all right, so that's our formula. We're going to do m to the 10th. Our delta x is 1 fifth. And I want to look at f of my intervals. My midpoint's 0.2. But I want, I mean, my, my, my width is 0.2. My delta x is 0.2. So I want half of that. So I'm going to take 0.2. And then I'm going to divide that in half. And I end up getting 0.1. So I'm going to start at 0 plus 0.1 to know my first point. And then I know that 
the length is 0.2, so I can add 0.2 to all my midpoints and just keep going. So it's point, what, not 0 0.2, 0 0.3. I'm going to add 0.2 to that, 0.5. Add 0.2 to that, 0.7. Plus f of 0.9. Plus f of 1.1. Plus f of 1.3 plus f of 1.5, plus f of 1.7, plus f of 1.9. That's all my intervals. And there should be 10 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's all 10 of them. So I want to sum them all together. So m to the 10th is equal to 1 fifth. Well, f of, ne f of 0 0.1 would be... 0.1 over 1 plus 0.1 squared plus 0.3 over 1 plus 0.3 square squared plus 0.5 over 1 plus 0.5 squared plus 0.7 over let me get rid of these dots when I was counting One plus point seven squared plus point nine over one plus point nine squared plus one point one over one plus one point one squared plus one point three over one plus one point three squared plus one point five over one plus one point five squared plus these are tedi tedious. 9 over 1, point, oh, 1 plus 1 1.9 squared. If that looks like just there. All right, that's what I need to do. Well, I want this answer to give to six decimal places. These are a bear to do. You got to put them in your calculator, and you end up with m to the tenth is equal to, or approximately equal to, point eight zero six five nine eight. Give me a second. I'll get my calculator and show you how I would do this. All right, I have my calculator. I'm going to start putting it in. It's going to be boring, but here it goes. So I have one fifth times. I want a point one divided by parentheses one plus point one squared close parentheses plus point, point 0.3 divided by open parentheses 1 plus point 0.3 squared close parentheses I'm going to stop with the video you can see that what I how I'm doing this and you can see my result in a minute it's going to take me a good minute to type this all in Okay, I'm all done typing it in, and I'm just about to hit the last parentheses. I need one more parentheses to close the whole thing, because remember I started off by saying it's one-fifth times, so that's the open parentheses for that grouping, and that's the last parentheses for the grouping. Hit enter, and there's my answer, 0 0.80659, round to 8. So you can see these are very tedious on the test. I'm not going to give you one that goes to 10. That's just, it'll take too long. Uh, I'll probably give you four, maybe five, but I'm not going to make them too long. So this is the decimal approximation of this problem. So give me a second. I want to see some. Okay, sorry for that delay. I just wanted to go to Wolfram Alpha and see what it would do. So here is Wolfram Alpha and its approximation. And you can see it's 0.8047. And that's not doing a uh, approximation like we were doing. It's actually using their software. And then we're going to also look at what the calculator would do. So your TI-84 can also do integration, as you probably know from Calc 1. And here is the results from that. And I integrated from 0 to 2 over x over 1 plus x squared dx, and I got that answer. So it's not that bad. It's uh, accurate to two decimal places, it's not really to the third decimal place. So now let's look at a third, a second problem. I'm not going to go back and forth using the other programs anymore. So we want to look and see what delta x is, and delta x 
delta x is equal to 2 minus 0. Oops, sorry. Look at the wrong problem. Delta x is 2 minus 1. And my n is 10. So I get 1 tenth or uh, when I divide that in half, sorry, my intervals, which is 0.1, my interval divide that in half is 0 0.05. So that means I'm going to start at 0 0.05 past 1. So m to the tenth is equal to 1 tenth. Now, the way I'm going to write this is the way I would expect you to write it on the test. I'm going to try to shortcut some things because I don't want you to have to spend this much time writing this many parts if I had 10. If I had 4 or 5, I would expect you to write everything out. So in the test, I would be okay if you just wrote this, f of 1.05, because you're showing your starting 0 0.05 from the starting point, plus f of 1.15, because uh, remember the intervals are 0.1 apart, plus f of 1.25, plus dot, 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 plus f of 1.95. And then the next step is to say m10 is equal to one tenth, and again, you're just going to show me a little bit of this 1.05 uh, cubed minus one plus 1.15 cubed minus one plus 1.15 1 1.25 1 1.25, not one, so it's 1.25 cubed minus one. Plus dot 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 plus 1.95 cubed minus 1. All right. So you're showing me all this so that if there's a calculation error, I know you know what you're doing. You just didn't know how to hit the buttons correctly. This is, I want the six decimal places. And the answer M10 is approximately equal to 1.518. Eight three six two. Again, this is just another way of doing these problems, All right? Let me just write this so it looks like somebody wrote this in English. Decimal places. All right. So we've seen a couple problems with the midpoint. So the next is all right. Well, if I have the midpoints, I can start playing around with these things. I could take half the summation of those midpoints the x and I start breaking it apart. So I'm going to say the summation of f of x sub i minus 1 and the summation of f of x is the same thing. You know, I, I had them apart. I put them together and I say that means I have f of x sub 0 plus f of x sub 1 plus f of x sub 1 plus f of x sub 2 plus f of x sub 2 plus f of x sub 3. So 0, 1, 1, 2. 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and so forth. And what I notice is if I put them all out that way, I start gathering up, there's only one term that's an x sub 0, and there's only one term that's an x sub n, and all the other terms are doubled. Well, that's interesting. So they're all doubled. Well, this turns out to be what we call the trapezoidal rule. So I have it written down. I don't write that there. It's called the trapezoidal rule, and because we're using the idea, concept of the trapezoid. So we have a delta x divided by 2. The first term and the last term is not multiplied by anything, and all subsequent terms in the middle are multiplied by a factor of 2, because there's two of them in that. Delta x is still b minus a over n. That hasn't changed. And my x sub i is going to be my a plus i times delta x. In other words, I'm just going to, once I know my point, I've got to start moving over. But the first point starts at a, where the last time I didn't start at a, right? It was, well, it was zero plus. So here we go. All right. We're going to find our delta x. This turns out to be one tenth. We've done this problem before, right? If we go back, and that looks like the problem we just got done doing, right? For the midpoints, the exact same problem. So we know it's delta x is 1. So I'm going to say t of 10, because I'm doing trapezoidal, is equal to 1 tenth, that's my delta x, times a half, that's part of the formula, of 
f of 1, I'm starting at f of 1, plus 2 of f of 1.1, plus 2 of f of 1.3, I'm sorry, 2, I'm sorry, wait. plus 2 of f of 1.3, plus 2 of f of 1.4, plus 2 of f of 1.5, plus 2 of f of 1.6, plus 2 of f of 1.7, plus 2 of f of 1.8, plus 2 of f of 1.9, plus f of 2. All right, so there we go, we have that. I put that back into my calculator like we did before. I'm just going to shortcut this and give you the answer. T of 10 is approximately equal, we're going to six decimal places, 1.506361. Right. So we know that M10 from the previous page was 1.518362. So I'm curious to see, going here, I'm going to change this up to be the square root of x cubed minus 1, raised to 0.5. I'm going from x to 1, 2, 2. And in here, It looks like the midpoint was, with only 10, was closer to being accurate. So now we're going to do a different problem using the trapezoidal yet again. But this time we want to n of 8. So we're going to say delta x is equal to 2 minus 0 over 8, 1 quarter, or 0.25. So we know the interval lengths are 0.25. T of 8 is equal to delta x, 1 over quarter, times its half. I'm going to write this in English now. 1 over quarter times a half times f of 0. Plus, now, after the first one, everything is going to be multiplied by 2 except for the last one. f of, f of 0.25, because we're starting at 0, plus 2 of f of 0.5 plus 2 of 0.75, plus 2 times f of 1, plus 2 of f of 1.25, plus 2 of f of 1.5, plus 2 of f of 1.75, plus f of 2. We close that off. And again, just to remind us, t of 8 is equal to 1 half times a quarter is 1 eighth, times 1 over 1 plus 0 to the 6, plus 2 over 1 plus 0.25 to the 6, plus 2 over 1 plus 0.5 to the 6, plus 2 over 1 plus 0.75 to the 6, plus 2 over 1 plus 1 to the 6, right, plus 2 over 1 plus 1.25 to the 6, plus 2 over 1 plus 1.5 to the 6, plus 2 over 1.75, 1 plus 1.3, let's write this, it's not clear what I wrote, 1 plus 1.75 raised to the 6 power plus 2, whoops, plus 2, 1 over 1 plus 2 to the 6th. And when I do that, t to the 8th, t sub 8, approximately equal to 6 decimal places 0, 4, 0, 7, 5, 6. That's my t sub 8. All right, we're almost done. We have a couple more to look at. 
Now we're going to look at Simpson's rule. So there's three things. We have trapezoidal, midpoint, and now we start off with midpoint, then we went to trapezoidal. Now we're at the Simpson's rule. And the Simpson's rule, the only thing I have to tell you is your n must be an even number. That's a rule. And the test pattern is the delta x divided by 3. The first term is always no coefficient, f times f of x sub 0. And then the patterning is a 4, then a 2, then a 4, then a 2, then a 4, then a 2, 4, ending with a 1. All right, so it must be an even number, n. And delta x is still b minus a divided by n, so that part hasn't changed at all. So let's look at the first problem we have. x over 1 plus x squared. I believe we've done this one already. That's one we did earlier. So delta x is equal to 0 0.2. So s sub 10 is equal to my delta x, 1 fifth, right? 1 fifth times a third. Because that's what the rule says, right? A third. There it is, a third times f of 0 plus 4 f of 1 fifth plus 2 f of 2 fifths plus 4 f of 3 fifths plus 2 f of 4 fifths plus 4 f of five fifths. I know five fifths is one. I'm just going to write that way. So all I'm doing is just incrementing, incrementing. Plus two f of six fifths plus four f of seven fifths plus two f of eight fifths plus two f of not two, four. Four f of nine fifths. I'm almost done, right? The last one goes back to a coefficient of 1, f of 2. So again, I have my patterns, 4, 4. Every other one's 4. 2, 2, 2, 2. And always a 1 on the first and last one. So I've done all that. I've put it in there. I'm going to put it in my calculator. And S sub 10 is approximately equal to 0 0.804779. All right. So now we're going to do this problem, which we've just done also. Delta X turns out to be a quarter. So the Simpsons S sub 8 is equal to delta X one quarter times one third, always a third, times f of zero plus, the first one's a four, f of 0.25 plus two, f of add a quarter to it, 0.5. This one has a four in front of it, add a quarter to it. Next one's two, f of one. I go back to four again f of 1.25, because I'm always adding a quarter to my in, in my interval for my next x value, plus 2 f of 1.5, plus 4 f of 1.75. And then on my last one, there is no coefficient. It's the coefficient, well, there is the coefficient 1. So if I was to write this out, 1 over 4 times 1 third is 1 twelfth. I'm looking at 1 over again, 1 plus 0 to the 6. So this is exactly what I would expect you to write on the test. 4 over 1 plus 0.25 to the 6 plus 2 over 1 plus 0.5 to the 6 plus 4 over 1 plus 1 plus 0.75 to the 6 plus dot, dot, dot. And then show me the last couple. 2 over 1 plus 1.5 to the 6 plus 4 over 1 plus 1.75 to the 6 plus 1 over 1 plus 2 to the 6. That looks like I have a different number there. 2 to the 6. 
and S sub 8 is approximately equal to 1.04217. 1 1.04217. All right. Well, that's everything I have today. You can go back and compare these. You can go back and look at Wolfram Alpha or some other. Use your calculator to get your answers, and you'll see that these approximations don't take a lot of terms to find it. 10, 15 terms isn't a lot of terms. I mean, it is when you have to hand crank them, but it's not that bad. On your test, I would never ask you to do that many terms. So that's the end of this. And the next section is the last section for this chapter test. It's improper integrals at the long section. Uh, it, it, it starts talking about convergence. So I look forward to seeing you in class again and have a great day.